Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode. It is episode 190 for October the 25th, 2022. And uh, what have I been working on? Well, before I get on with that, I just want to make a comment about this. Um, Walter and I were both wearing these fleece, uh, well, I guess they are technically a jacket, but they're very light. Uh, we were both wearing these yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live, or the other day on Stephen and Walter Live, and somebody said, was it cold in your house? Why are you wearing a coat? Um, uh, yeah, it is cool. I am in my basement, so you know what basements are like. My, my, our basement is fully finished, but um, it does get a little cool this time of the year, and uh, the windows are a little drafty in this house. That's why we're having new ones put in. Um, and even though usually... For most of my life, I'm one of those kind of people that generates heat. You know, I'm always hot, no matter what. Mm, not so much anymore. I get a little bit cooler, uh, especially in this time of the year, in the late fall, um, when I'm just sitting and working on something. So I throw this on. Um, also, because I'm a cheap bugger, <laughs> and I refuse to turn on the furnace yet. I'm not turning the furnace on until the, the, the temperature drops outside to below zero celsius um well i may turn it on sooner than that but um right now nope especially with the price of gas and everything else uh these days yeah but this is why i'm wearing this i'm also wearing it for another reason this is not actually tuesday october the 25th it's actually monday october the 24th but when you see this, this will have gone up on the Tuesday, which is my regular day for doing the Idiot Quilter uh, episodes. The reason it's one day earlier, I'm making it one day early, uh, is because we're getting our new doors and windows starting tomorrow, Tuesday, which will be the day that I would record this uh, video. And there'll be a lot of noise, I am sure, as they rip out half my house putting these new things in. So I'm doing this in advance and I just thought I'd break it up a little bit because uh, actually if you take a look at uh, my blog, this is the shirt I'm wearing. So I'm just dressing it up a little bit. Don't want you to think that I'm some kind of pig and I don't change my shirt except once a month. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, let's jump right in to what I have been working on. Let me switch my camera. Here we go. Now, these are the eighth month blocks for the block of the month called Lakeside that I have been showing you in bits and pieces over the past eight months. <laughs> I'm getting a little tired of this project, but we're coming close to the end. Um, actually, this month, these were not difficult to make, but there were a lot of them. I have them all labeled, all ready to go. You can't sew them into the quilt yet because I have to wait for the next month's instructions but they're ready to go. Now, uh, Donna, the hostess with the mostest from Ultimate Sewing, who is teaching this as a Zoom class, she asked us uh, in the past week when we got these, uh, if we would like to do months nine and 10, there are 10 months total in this project, if we'd like to uh, do both of those at, in the November's class, and that would mean then that we're finished. We have all the blocks that we need. And we all said, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Because although this is going to be a really nice quilt when it's done in the whole bit and the classes have been excellent, um, we're a little tired. And I think Dawn is a little tired too, as the instructor. Um, so yeah, we get it in November. We get the last of the blocks and it'll all be done. So, and some of the people in our group uh, would like to have it done before Christmas because I think they want to give it as a gift. Um, I don't care, but I'm just getting tired of it. I want to get it done and out of my hair kind of a thing. Yeah, because then I can put it on Lucy, get it all quilted up, get it bound, fold it up, and put it on a corner, in a corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, whatever. But uh, anyways, you can see this whole, these blocks show you how many little tiny pieces there have been. And you've got to get the colors in the right order. And there's a lot of different colors. And of course, when I picked my uh, fabric for this, I picked um, stuff that, well, sometimes the colors are very close. And you can it's very easy to get things twisted around. I've done a lot of labeling with this. 
Um, and you can see in the background there are some strips that are already labeled too. Well, I'm coming to the, what those are. Those are for the other block of the month class that I'm taking. But back to this one, which is actually called Lakeside. You can look it up. Um, I don't think, no, yes, you can find the, the entire pattern for this online. Uh, you might have to do a bit of a search because they'd like to sell it as a kit in some places and a lot of places like to do this as a block of the month so you can't get the whole pattern without you know paying for the block of the month class or whatever but it is it is out there i found it and i don't remember where i found it i'm sorry um so i can't put that link in uh but i warn you this is a very tedious project in some ways okay so anyways, we're getting closer to the end and I will have the big reveal when I finally get it finished, but that's not going to happen for another month or so. And these little pieces strips in the back with a lot of labels on them, a lot of letters on them, they are what make this. This is the other block of the month class that I'm taking. This is called Color Splash. You've already seen the center part of this, the center block, that's all applique. Well. That was month one. Month two is this border around this center block. And you can see all tiny little pieces. I think they all work out to about one and a half inch squares for this. And there's a lot of them. However, you don't do them. You don't cut it as one and a half inch squares. You do it in strips. And then the way you cut it, it ends up, you know, each piece being, uh, you know, the little pieces in the right spot. Okay. And that's fine. This was not difficult to do, but what was difficult was it was very easy to get your pieces when you're trying to assemble them all together in the wrong order. And Walter has studied this because he's hoping I have made a mistake, but he hasn't found one and I haven't made one. Um, I almost did. It's very easy to get some of these pieces turned around and you won't even notice it until you stand back and really study it. But I didn't because you can see there is a progression here, a pattern, you know, notice where this yellow part in this top left corner goes, matches the one down here in this corner. And you have this sort of flow of the yellow. Then in each of these other corners, you have the same thing, but they're flipped. And then in here, you have a, a red and a red that goes across. Then you have this printed uh, deeper red, printed deeper red, then a purples. And then the blues. So you can see uh, they're basically mirrors, mirror effect on each of those. So um, even Donna herself, when she was going through the instructions with us this past week for doing this uh, border treatment, uh, somebody pointed out that she had got her bottom border turned around backwards. It wasn't that noticeable. And to the unskilled eye, they would never have noticed it. But when you do find it and point it out, well, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So poor Donna, she had to rip that piece out and get it on right. But that's just how easy it is to get screwed up in a pattern like this. So sticky notes and, pin, and pins are your best friend in doing something like this because you need to label, label, label. Um, and uh, also direction. I had to write on my little sticky notes, like a little arrow pudding top, so I wouldn't get them screwed around. So anyways, it's it's been a fun quilt. I've kind of enjoyed doing the applique that's there, and there is more applique to come with this quilt, because that's the main feature of this whole quilt, is the applique. And I used to be a little bit hesitant about doing applique. I was a little bit afraid of it. But you know, after this project, no way. I am not afraid. And I find... I kind of like doing it as well, which is a good thing because I bought some time ago a whole bunch of uh, their, their little blocks that are applique, um, their landscapes of each province of Canada. And the idea is you can either put them together as little wall hangs or I'm going to put them all together if I ever get back to it as a quilt. I think it'll be, well, quilt combination quilt wall hang basically but it's all applique and um yeah that's why i haven't got to it but i should get it out and go through it again you know what's going to happen is and i think everybody does this 
we all get into that uh, at New Year's time. You know, what am I going to do in the next year? We have this renewed energy and things about doing projects and we write our lists and we never get to them. And so I will go through all my projects that are sitting stacked up and that I haven't got to yet. Um, and I'll start making my lists of what I want to accomplish in the next year. And probably after about the first two weeks of the new year, I will probably de promptly deviate from that list and who knows what I'll get done. But, you know, it's a thought. Okay, so that's what I've been working on. Oh, yeah, one other thing, too. I started. I've had this for a while. I bought it at the end of August. They had a sale on it uh, from OESD. I believe it was OESD. Uh, in, it's in the hoop machine in uh, applique, and it's for making a little gingerbread house. And I've started the pieces. Now, there are quite a few pieces in this that you have to put together. After you get them all sewn up, I'm not done yet. There's still quite a few more pieces. There's some trees, there's a chimney, there's all kinds of things here, but it'll be really cute when I get it done. So that is the project I am working on now, but I have to put this on hold. I might later today get another couple of pieces made, but because they're coming in to put the new windows and doors in starting tomorrow, and they tell us it'll be a two day job. So Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm really probably not going to be able to get to this. I probably won't get to any sewing. In fact, after I've finished doing this video, I have to clean out the sides you can't see over there where the windows are, and it's a major clean out. I have to move everything out of that corner, everything, take everything down off the walls that are there uh, so they have, you know, they can get at things easily. And that means I'll also have to take my main sewing machine and um, disconnect it and move it out of the room because I don't want whatever mess on top of my sewing mach machine and get it out of their way. Plus, it means I have to unplug it and I have quite a, an elaborate power source for all of my stuff in this room. You know, they never put uh, outlets in convenient spots and there's never enough of them. So, you know, I've got giant, powerful uh, power blocks you know, with surge protects and everything like that, that I have mm, iron plugged into, the sewing machine plugged into, miscellaneous other items plugged into, lights, things like that. All that has to be disconnected. And I have to move out tables that are there. And those tables have things on them and in them. And I'm sure I'm going to find stuff I forgot I had. But that means I'm probably not going to be able to do any sewing. So, yeah. Not looking forward to that, but just saying to myself, it's only two days and Walter thinks he'll get it done in one day. I hope he's right, but they did schedule us for two days and then I have to put everything back and probably have to clean because there's probably going to be dust. Apparently they do some cleaning, but you know, I don't know what that entails. I am sure it's not like going around and dusting off everything very nicely. I keep telling myself it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the retreat that just happened. My retreat, the Idiot Quilter Retreat that was on um, this past Saturday. I had a great time. I think other people did. I, get a I got a lot of comments, both written and verbal, uh, about how much people enjoyed it. That made me feel very happy because I do put a lot of effort into it. And if you want to know more about what goes on behind the scenes, you know, these retreats, you just don't pick a date and say, yeah, we're having a retreat and let it do its own thing. No, I am what I call an active moderator of something like this. You have to be. There was a total of 76 people who showed up for this. Some people weren't there for the whole day. Some people came in, came and went, came and went. But, you know, every time somebody does that, and I'm not complaining, you have to let them back in, right? So you can't be sitting there and trying to do some of your own sewing. I didn't. I didn't do a thing. I didn't even plan to because I knew in order to keep things running smoothly on a technical level as well as on um, an environmental level, meaning you know, atmosphere, keeping people engaged, that kind of stuff. Um, you have to be in control and you have to be doing your job. 
I did go on a retreat a couple of months ago, uh, not as big uh, as this, as mine, uh, and the moderator of it wasn't paying any attention. There were people trying to get in, and she didn't see them and didn't let them in until who knows when. And I could see on mine that there were people trying to get in, but I couldn't let them in. So, you know, you've got to be an active moderator if it's going to be successful, I think. That's my belief anyways. Um, also, uh, it was great. Uh, it was a great group. Uh, just I couldn't have asked for a better group of participants because people were respectful, supportive, and interesting. People did not talk over top of one another. I was really afraid I'd have to use the mute button a lot, but I didn't. Um, yeah, people kept the conversation light, meaning they didn't get into politics or COVID or the, you know, the problems of the world and things like that, because part of being at a retreat is to get things done, but also to just forget about all the other problems that are happening in life. Come, relax, be creative, be inspired. And I really think, uh, and people did say this, so I'm not just saying it out of my own ego here, that uh, they thought that that worked out really well for them. So I was very pleased, very pleased with myself. I'll admit it, I'm very proud of myself. I'm, and Walter was involved too. Yes, he, he was there. I mean, I'm not putting him on the back burner because Walter was a godsend um, with his help with it because there were times when I was trying to do two or three things at once and Walter picked up, you know, where I was maybe slacking off, for lack of a better word, from it all. So, yeah. Um, so, as I said, if you want to know more about it, if you weren't a participant and, uh, well, you missed something great. You really did. Um, you, you can hear all about that on Stephen and Walter Live uh, this past episode. Um, I'm in the process now of gathering more ideas from people who participated in the retreat for making the next one even better. I'm always trying to improve the retreats. That was my fourth one. So the fifth one's coming up. It won't be until the spring of 2023. Sometime probably in mid-March, maybe early April. I have not decided yet. Um, but in the meantime, especially for those of you that have attended this retreat, if you'd like to, um, you know, just email me some ideas. Uh, I have a folder uh, on both my computer and a paper folder, and I'm going to collect these ideas and uh, see what I can do with some of those, uh, you know, just to make things even more interesting. Um, the other thing, too, that people, I want people to keep in mind that the next one will be free as well. I don't have any plans, although I did talk about the advantages of charging people at least a non-refundable registration fee. Um, and that's really to make people who are not taking it quite as serious as I would like them to, meaning, you know, they register themselves and then they don't show up for whatever reason. You know, some reasons, yeah, life happens, right? And we discussed that on Stephen and Walter Live. But some, there, I had a few people just were complete no-shows. They had registered, never got uh, an email saying, so sorry, I had this come up, I can't come, or whatever. You know, just didn't show up. Somebody said in the chat uh, yesterday, or on, on Sunday at the uh, live, I keep forgetting that this is going on to, up tomorrow from when I'm making it now, um, who said that was just plain rude. Yes. Thank you for that comment, because it was. It's exactly how I felt. It was rude. Um, so what am I going to do about that? Well, I did discuss, you know, charging a non-refundable fee to register. And if you can't come, you can't come, but you're not getting your money back. But I don't want to do that for several different reasons. We discussed that uh, the other day on the live as well. But... What I am going to do is those people that showed up for the retreat, I have your email address. I have a list. You will get an invitation to the next retreat first before I open it up to public. So you get first dibs on reserving a spot. And that's just my little way of, you know, 
rewarding those people who were conscientious about that and for penalizing those that just didn't bother. And I'm sorry if some of those people are listening. I'm sure you have an excuse for why you didn't show up and you're probably taking offense to what I've just said and I don't care. That's the way it is. <laughs> it's my sandbox, my rules. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was great. The presenters were great too. And for those of you that weren't able to come to the retreat but would have been interested in hearing the presenters or there were some people who couldn't stay for the whole day or missed one of the presenters or whatever for whatever reason i have i recorded those presentations with the permission of the presenters and they are now on my youtube channel and you can catch them there and there's links for all of those in the show notes below so check it out because those presenters i can't say too much about my three presenters they were absolutely excellent. Added so much to the day. And they did this, basically, they were not paid for it. They have my undying gratitude. But I can't afford to pay people. This is a free event. And they put thought and planning into it. And I am ever so grateful. Who were those people? Adam from Ab Adam Sows. Chris O'Neill from So the Distance, and Lynn Reinhardt from Cotton Art Studio. Links to their YouTube channels and um, links to their presentation presentations are all in the show notes. So please, for me and for them, go if you've never been to their YouTube channel before, go subscribe, like, you won't be disappointed. And that's just a way that I can show my or help show my appreciation support for their fine work. Okay, so that takes me to a demo this week. Now, last week I showed you a new tool that I bought called the Binding Ease. It was expensive, okay, but I am absolutely loving it. And so it is the, the little silicone plat pad. It is such a simple idea, but it's brilliant. The person who invented this, I hope they have a patent on it and the whole bit because, you know, it is an excellent, excellent uh, tool. Um, I'm not going to dread making binding ever again. So here's my demo of how to use the binding ease to make binding strips. So I just ordered and got this new fangled little invention here. It is called Binding Ease. It's by Quilted Hearts. And I believe there is a video online showing you how to use this, but I thought I'd give it a try myself. Now, I've already mentioned the fact that this little sucker cost me about 80 bucks by the time I got it shipped in the whole bit. And I did buy it in a Canadian store, uh, stitch by stitch, um, out in Kingston, Ontario. So the whole idea behind this is that you have these little openings here and you feed your binding piece, your two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch strip through this. It'll fold it in half. Well, you start folding in half and you lay your iron right on top of it here because this is a silicone mat and it presses your binding. And so the idea is you just keep pulling it through here. So we're going to try it. You can see it's still in the package. I haven't used this yet. There were instructions on the back and it says start by folding and pressing a few inches of your binding fabric. Feed it through the side loops across the mat. Set iron on binding ease and binding fabric. Slowly pull binding while keeping the fabric edges together. Binding fabric press quickly and with ease. Okay and then they say view the tutorial at quiltedhearts.com. All right let's get it out of the package. It sounds easy enough. hardest parts getting it out of the package I think let's get this out of our way so here you go you can see it is a silicone mat and it has these little loopy things on the side now this is a very awkward position for me as I try to show you this because <laughs> believe it or not my camera is behind me I've got my iron here off to the side ready to go and I've got some binding and I just grabbed a strip of leftover Christmas binding. So they say, first thing you want to do, let's move this out of our way so you can see, is to press your binding just to get it started. Oops. 
Okay. Then you take it, you feed it through one of these loops. Sorry if my arm's in the way. Making sure you keep it folded. Okay, there we go. And then you just set your iron on top of this and away you go, making sure you keep it folded as it's going on. So I hope you can see under my arm what I am doing here. And I have a fairly long strip of fabric. And it's moving along quite nicely. told you this was a long strip of fabric. It's working very well. I am impressed so far. Okay. Let's take a look, shall we? Yep, I have binding. And you see that was a fairly lengthy piece of binding and I did that in under a minute, that amount of it. So I am impressed. This was worth the money it cost me. I will use this a lot and I'm not going to dread having to make binding as I have in the past. So this is called the Binding Ease with a Z, E-A-Z-E. -E, and just look it up. You can probably get it at a local quilt store or online from lots of places. It's the new trending product, and I'm say it's good. So it was worth the money. I mean, it ended up cost me with shipping and the whole bed in Canadian dollars, about $86 Canadian. But I do not regret spending any of that money on that item. It was well or is well worth it. Okay, so that takes us to Subscribers Quilt of the Week, and this is from Ellen Holshabach. I hope I said her last name right. Sorry, Ellen, if I did not. And here's her beautiful creation. This week's Quilt of the Week comes from Ellen Holshabach. Hope I said your name correct, Ellen. And she sends this beautiful and very, very cute baby quilt along. And this is what she says. A baby quilt for my best friend's son and his wife. The pattern is called Goodnight Baby. It is a by Annie pattern. A free motion, the majority of the quilt, did stenciling in the borders and machine embroidery motifs in some of the blocks. And this is really very, very pretty. And I love this, the quilting in it and the little applique uh, animals looking over the top. Well, that would look really cute on a kid's bed. Um, I think they're going to be thrilled to, to uh, receive this. And I said the quilting on it, but is there quilting on this? It looks like she's held it up to a window and it doesn't look like it is yet quite finished. I could be wrong about this. Um, but it doesn't look like there's any batting in here yet. Um, but there does look like there's quilting. She said free motion quilting. So there is free motion quilting in it. Okay. I'm a little confused. Sorry, Ellen. But it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, quilt. Um, but I'm just wondering about the, the batting. Is there batting in it? <laughs> but either way, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, maybe there isn't any batting because it would make it too heavy if it's a baby quilt. That's a possibility. I don't know. Maybe, Ellen, you can send me a little bit more information about this creation. So, but either way, I love it and thank you for sending it. And so that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. I just came across this uh, recently. It's called AQS Quilt TV. And it is full of a lot of really great information and tips and tutorials and everything like that. So here's my review of AQS Quilt TV. 
This week's YouTube channel of the week is called QAS Quilt TV. And just so you know what this is all about, let's take a look at their About section on their uh, YouTube channel. It says, Learn the latest quilting tips and techniques from beginning quilting to advanced skills from world-class quilting instructors. Be inspired by award-winning quilts from around the world with one-on-one -on -one interviews with the contestant. Watch product reviews, tutorials, and demos on subjects ranging from sewing, fabric storage, embroidery, dyeing, fiber crafts, and so much more from leaders in the quilting industry. So this has a lot of information. So if we go to their list of videos, we get a sense of what it is they're showing. Um, it looks like they're talking about different uh, famous quilters. They have interviews with them. Um, there is testing long arms, uh, tips on quilting with a ruler, uh, something called parade of quilts. So it looks like basically a show of various quilts. Um, it looks like they go to uh, quilt shows as well and talk to creators there. Um, it did say they had tips and tricks. So let's look in their playlist and see how things are organized. Um, yeah, they have a lot of shows in their playlists. And then they have a beginner series with Bonnie. Um, I guess for quilting as well. So there is some interesting things here done by looks like professionals so you might learn a little bit especially if you're a beginner quilter but if you like to look at quilts or meet creators i think this might be the site for you as well so that's a that's q a s quilt tv so now i turn to my vision board which i have to take all down off my wall and because it's too close to where the new windows are going in um, so here's a, a pattern that I have on there. It's called the New Year's Star by Donna Jordan. I love Donna Jordan's patterns for a couple of reasons. One, they're always free. And two, very well written. And three, she always has a YouTube video to go along with them. And this was not one that I was familiar with. I'd never seen the video for this. But somebody at, uh, I think it was um, on one of my Sew and Craft With Me uh, sessions, was working on this and I really liked the pattern. So I went and I downloaded it and now I'm going to share it with you. This week's pattern from my vision board is one that I recently downloaded. It is a, it is a free pattern and it comes from Donna Jordan at Jordan Fabrics. And this one I was put on to by one of my subscribers who on one of my on-demand sew days was working on this one. And I really like the pattern of this. Not so sure about the colors that they're showing here, but I do like the pattern. So I downloaded it and it's on my vision board to make. But let's just take a look at it. it Finish size is 50 by 59, so it's not a huge quilt. I do really like, though, the secondary patterns that form in here. And these blocks look very interesting um, with the little piece that goes across uh, the blocks in here. So a little different technique. And I find the border treatment, too, very uh, interesting. Um, of course, it shows you can do this as a 10-inch square. So basically, it looks like it's layer cake friendly and a donna jordan fabric uh fabric or pattern always has a video that you can go to for um help as well but there's lots of diagrams uh and pictures here in this pattern that shows you exactly what to do so this is one that uh I'm, there, there's the block right there that i was talking about something it's just a little different than what i've ever seen before so this is one i have on my vision board and someday maybe I'll get to it. Maybe before New Year's, not this year, maybe next year or the year after. So that'll probably hit my list of projects I want to do in the new year because <laughs> I've got others ahead of it. Okay, so interviews for this week. Don't have any. Nope. Same old story. Um, I thank those of you that have sent me suggestions. Um, and I have put out some feelers, but I'm not getting any bites. Um, I'm not sure why. Well, people are busy for one thing, or maybe some people don't think I'm legit because they don't know who, who I am. They don't know my channel, although I send them links to other interviews that I've done so they can see the kind of thing that I do. Um, but 
keep sending me your suggestions. Now, some of your suggestions I'm not even going to attempt to uh, write to the individual because they're way too big. Um, part of my criterion is to promote those creators that have YouTube channels that where they don't have a lot of subscribers yet because people don't know they're out there and they have quality content. But I have a few more suggestions that have come from people. I'm sending out feelers to them to see if I can get them uh, on the show, if I can do an interview with them. So, you know, thank you to those of you that have sent me some suggestions. And if you have more, I'm open to them. Okay, so that takes me then to the online uh, quilting store uh, for this week. And it's this, this one is called Taylor Sewing and Quilt Shop. This week's online quilt store is called Taylor Sewing Quilt Shop, and it's located in Brockville, Ontario, Canada. I have never been to this store, but let's check out their website and see what they have to offer. So on their home page, as you can see, uh, they look like they're a Janome dealer. They're showing machines. They have upcoming classes, sewing machines, and an event calendar. They have a newsletter. And... They have something called Turkey Class Video and Ruler Combo, 15% off. Looks like they deal with Silly Moon uh, Rulers, which is another Canadian company. They have a block of the month. That's very pretty. The Arabella. And they have, let's have a kitchen party, October 1st to 31st. The Quilters Quest Shop Hop is pleased to invite you to their month-long kitchen party. The whole month of October is reserved just for you. Print your passport, pick up a friend or two, plan your trips. You won't have to rush from store to store. Well, okay, that's interesting. Um, and they have their featured pop products. They have a retreat registration, rented lips, our retreat registration at the Glen House Resort, November 14th to the 16th. Um, the bucket tote and they're featuring some genome machines and some fabric and some products uh they handle arrow and kangaroo cabinets and they have trend tags so quite a bit here and they also show you how to get there and conveniently they're close to some hotels too might be worth a trip to Brock brockville but let's check out the website and really see if i want to go to this actual shop someday so what do we got? Fabric. Let's go for the fabric. Okay, they have all their fabric listed in categories along the left-hand side of the page, which I always appreciate. I like that quite a bit. And then they have it all here, pictures of it. They have batiks. Uh, they have all kinds of different collections by the looks of things. And they have lots of the major designers. And a few on here I've not heard of before, which is nice. Nice variety when you're shopping online. So yeah, they look like they've got quite a bit. Um, so let's pop in to one. I usually go to Northcott because that one I'm very familiar with in terms of price. And they do tell you when something sold out up front. That's always nice to know. Um, $13 for Toscana. They're basically blenders. And I'm assuming that's $13 a meter. Well, let's check that out and see. Do they tell you what they charge or what their it is? Not really. So let's just see if there's more about that here. Yes, it's in meters and it's $13 a meter. Well, that's a really good price for Northcott Tus uh, Tuscana. But let's look at another line because those are blenders. Let's get into something a little bit more elaborate um let's check out can canadian a eh? Ooh, 975 for those 17 dollars okay 1750 all right so now but that's still a good price that's still a good price so let's pick another manufacturer something that might be a little bit more elaborate um let's check out free spirit 1365 this must be wide back that has to be wide back at that price 36 dollars per medium yeah it's 108 inch wide back that is on the upper end of the scale for wide back 
in price. Okay, but overall, from what I can see here, let's just pick something else, 17. So it looks like their average price is $17, $18 a meter, which is good. I think that's a fairly good price given today's prices. All right, so what else do we have here? They do have batting. And uh, that's sold out, 128. A lot of this is sold out by the looks of things. Um, sell 96. They sell it by the yard, 1859 for Nature's Touch wool batting. Well, wool blinding does tend to be expensive. Um, so most of their batting looks like it's come in pre-packaged amounts. Uh, cotton batting, $20.99 for a meter, I would assume, 96 inches wide. So I'd say their prices for batting are about standard. So let's see what else is online. Books, classes, fabric, gift cards, kits. Let's see what they have in kits. And yeah, uh, none of this is really grabbing me. But they don't have a bad selection. A few interesting pieces there. Um, needlework and embroidery. Uh, this looks like hand embroidery. Yes, it is. Looks like there might be some cross stitch in here as well. Okay. And thread. Let's see what they sell for thread. They have Glide, they have Orophil, they have Guterman, Hand Sew. So they have a fair variety. Let's check out their prices on Orophil. 1719. Uh that's see that looks like it's probably 50 weight and is that 50 weight yeah 50 weight uh 1719 that's a little bit high that's a little bit high from what i'm used to paying anyways i pay around 15. so um what else did they have pre-cuts hmm it doesn't look like they have pre-cuts. Go back into fabric here. Maybe I missed it. Uh, I'm not really seeing. Well, that might be some of this might be pre-cuts, but um, Oh, here we go. They have a section on pre-cuts. Okay. Yeah, pretty much your standard. Prices are about standard. Yeah. So, nothing that I couldn't get somewhere else, but and prices are about average. So, it's kind of a thing if I was actually in the store, I might pick some of those up. Okay. So, let's take a look at patterns as well. See what kind of selection we have in patterns. Not much oh wait well okay looks like they have some embroidery patterns as well as well they have nine pages of them so i guess there's something there uh for you as well selection not a bad selection all right let's check out their classes online they do have online and it looks like in-person classes as well Okay, and they have a fair number to choose from. Looks like they have a Zoom, a couple of Zoom classes on uh, quilting. All right, and sewing machines. Janome, Fath, and used machines. Okay, so they are a dealer for that, and they are a dealer for Errol. Looks like Errol and Kangaroo and cabinets as well. So shipping let's find out about their shipping online orders up to 149.99 will ship for a flat rate of 15 dollars can canadian by canada post that's not bad online orders over that amount are free okay that's pretty good states up to 199.99 is a flat rate of 20 dollars canadian that's a good price and over 199.99 free 
Okay. So, yeah. So the shipping is good. Um, They look like they have a block of the month. And there it is. That's a nice one. And, yeah. So, my overall impression of Taylor Sewing, I think I would be willing to try them out sometime and order something from them. Their website seems to be well laid out, well organized, and their prices seem good and their shipping seems good. So, overall, I think this is a site worth visiting. Okay, so coming near the end of the episode but just a couple of things uh, again thank you to all of you who showed up for the retreat it was a great day um it made me feel that it was well worth the time and effort i put into it and yes as you know i've already said it there'll be another one in the spring so stay tuned and coming up is another event we're moving close to the first Wednesday of the new month, which is November. I mean, we're still in October right now, but geez, next Monday is Halloween and then bang, November and bang, bang, first Wednesday of November falls really quickly on the heels of Halloween, November the 2nd. So it's time for Craft and Chat. So, yep, Craft and Chat, November the 2nd, advance notice. I already have the Zoom links in the show notes below, so you can check that out. And those of you on my mailing list, you will get a notice of that uh, a few days, probably at the tail end of this week. That will go out to you. And if you want to be part of that mailing list, just send me an email. Uh, my email address is in the show notes below as well, and I'll be more than happy to put you on the mailing list for Craft and Chat. Okay, that's it for me today. Um, I'm about to have two days, I think, of sheer hell uh, with my new windows and doors. But hopefully this time next week, I'll be able to show you what that looks like and have a big smile on my face because it's done. My stuff is back where it's supposed to be and my house is clean again, I hope. Okay, I hope your week's exciting. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye for now.